according to their survey. This is not just a random check, or it's not something that we have any control over. We have no control over whatsoever. They specify where the money has to be spent, and uh, so that's the reason that there are certain streets that it has to be, that's where it has to go. Okay, you know the streets, right, Jim? Yes. Okay, you, you know. You want to go ahead and name the streets? Uh, South Avenue, everybody calls it Four Boy Hill, from uh, Jacksboro Pike, or Central, or Gambling, and Red Light, to Loop Road, <coughs> South Cumberland, up here from Central, to the city limit, out of Long Hollow, uh, 13th Street, from the Red Light, there at, uh, it's at uh, Central, diagonally across from Corner Market. 13th Street from Central to Beach. Then, depending on how the money goes, Back, back, back Valley Road is the next street, starting in there behind the middle school, is the next street on their saving schedule. Okay, it's just Foothills Drive to Back Valley Road, isn't it, Jim? It's not all Back Valley Road, is it? No, Foothills Drive is, is not, uh, part of it. not part of it, for whatever reason. <laughs> but uh, whatever money, when we get these streets completed, whatever money, of course, the tonnage and all that stuff, asphalt tonnage, will determine how much, if any, that we can pay on back with the Valley Road, starting at Foothills Drive. Our of course, this paving includes striping, uh, street signs, uh, utility adjustments. Uh, I guess that's about it. So this is not just blacktop, but it includes striping and, and utility Sign. adjustments and street signs. Any other questions? <coughs> Okay. Number two, ordinance 2012 07 ordinance of any zoning ordinance of seal of all to the city. Chapter 4, section 11 44 from a C1 business district, chapter, chapter 4, section 11 45 to a C2 highway business district. And chapter 4, section 11 46 C3 local business district. Stan? Mayor, Council, this, this ordinance was passed unanimously by the Planning Commission on to you all which is prohibiting temporary structures in a commercial area, C1, C2, C3, uh, unless it is approved by the Board of Zoning Appeals, there won't be any temporary structures. And what we're referring to is temporary structures, someone setting up a temporary like shed or something to run a, run a store out of, but it would have to be approved through the Board of Zoning Appeals Plan Commission. Is there any more comments? That, that only pertains to the commercial district. That's right? correct. And that's a, there's a time limit on that too, isn't there, 90 days. 90 days. They just don't bother the one that's already our stand? No, but they will, I guess what you would call it, grandfather from anything from this point on, it will affect us. Do you know how many we have? Be grandfather again? Uh, at this <coughs> time, you've got six. Any more comments from council? Great. Yeah. No, uh, I'll let this down drafting that one. I'll approve it. All right, let's go into the meeting. This meeting is called to order. Trevor, you do the order. Trevor, please. Please stand. We'll go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Father, we thank you, Lord Father, this night. Dear God, for all your blessings, especially for salvation of the cross of Calvary. Pray that you bless our community and our nation and our leaders and our local leaders, their God and officials, that they would make the right decisions for the community and for us. We thank you, dear God, for your leadership and for all your grace and mercy. We remember all those that has cancer and all those different diseases and those that are sick in the hospital and those in the nursing home. Special blessing upon them. And I pray that you bless our city and the officials and all the people gathered here together and we'll give you the honor, praise, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
recite the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here. Mr. Faden. Here. Mr. Graham. Here. Mr. Hatmaker. Here. Mayor Sanfield. Here. Item number four. Approved minutes under December 2012 meeting. What's the pleasure, Council? Second. Motion to have a second. Second. Have a second. Mr. Bollinger. Yes. Mr. Faden. Yes. Mr. Graham. Yes. Mr. Hatmaker. Yes. Motion carries. Number five. Reports from your boards, committees, and department meetings. What's the pleasure, Council? Move and approve, Mayor. Have a motion to have a second. Second. Colorado. Mr. Bollinger. Yes. Mr. Faden. Yes. Mr. Graham. Yes. Mr. Hatmaker. Yes. Item number six, any comments from the citizens? Charles? Come on up, please. Okay. Where are you going to black top at? I put away for long. He didn't mention it. And I found that the house is another thing on him. Some of them you have black top, got one house on the street. You know, you just done that. Right. I just was going to wonder from Jim when you go fish, it's getting bad. I know. Twelve houses on that. I count some taxis in on it. On Walden's Charles. Walden Street, down. Yeah. Jim. This money through this STP, we're not, we have certain streets okay. that it has to be spent on. Yeah. Now, when other paving money becomes available, I'll admit, West Walden does need to be paid. I'm going mm -hmm. to how many houses on it? Right. Twelve on you black top. Some got one on it, maybe right. some more. Of a little, you know, right. not a house, but a house. Right. One house, I know. I just go wonder when you go do it. You know, some mm -hmm. of the neighbors got asked me about. It, and I said I don't know. They promised me to go fishing. You hear them go by and not hit them chunk holes and. You go up and look at it. Don't I, I, I see you. There's some bad shape. Oh, <laughs> they got twelve houses on it. Um, Jim Shorter this summer sometime, right? Or this summer. The way the, the the way the state cut the budget, I don't when we'll have any money. You have any money for besides you have to grant pay. money to pay no. with? I mean you'll have any money but for patching. Well, yeah, we can patch a little, but as far as paving, we we just don't have the money. Well that state money you just got them black topping up. Through High Street, that straight state money? No. Oh, no. City well, money, that, I thought it was. Yeah. But that was, uh, that was designated for that yeah, street. Yeah, just for that street. Uh, <clears throat> Do you, we have any money left out of that uh, capital outlay note that was designated for payment? No. It was None all, at all. It was all used up. But it bad, you know. It and went over. Pardon? We went over a little bit on that. I had to, I had to shift some money out of yeah. another fund a little bit to finish paying for it. Is that one of the, your priorities that you had listed, uh, Jim? The paving? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I paving, mean, uh, as far as we, you know, as far as it would go. Yeah. So, what what we're saying is, if, when the money comes uh, available, <coughs> we want to one of the first streets. Walden is one of the work, yeah. Walden yeah. is one of the streets that needs paving. Yeah. Uh, and I'm saying you got 12 houses uh, on it, and that quite a bit. Yeah. You know, yeah. A lot yeah. of taxi coming in there. Right, I agree. Thank you. You have Thank you, Charles. Any more comments? Those being done? Any announcements? Uh, not on that, but you've got some people here, so I think you want to talk. I, I just asked you to oh, comment. Uh, comment for says they don't know. Unless you tell them. Gary, you want to say something, Gary? Ryan? Both? I assume that's what they're here for. I don't know. I'm, not, I'm, not yeah. I'm not familiar with this place, so I'll just stand here. No, mostly everybody down here. Mr. Stanfield, Mr. Hatmaker, Mr. Bannon, Stan, Mr. Birch. You know, probably 70 percent of people down here tonight. Uh, the only issue that uh, 
I brought here tonight, I believe Mr. Stanfield and Mr. Hatmaker is already familiar with this little parking zone up here next to the restaurant. You know, we had an issue of uh, Mom being rolled a ticket and Mr. Goins being rolled a ticket, which I have no problem with that. And I spoke to Mike, I spoke to Chief Police, and where about this issue? Uh, there was a two hour parking sign there. We had to down. Okay. Uh, the only issue that I had in dispute with this situation is it should be on both sides of the street. Okay. And you referred to me that the sign wasn't in whatever for the other side. Okay, no problem with that. Uh, I don't know what the city's issue is on this, whether it's still going to be a two hour park in the bus. No, I don't know. No. Okay. I understand that, but uh, I've also, you've got to understand the chief of police situation here. Uh, this hasn't been enforced in years. Okay. There in the loading zone behind Smith, because you know a lot of people's pulling in there getting stuff and going. I understand that. Okay. But you've got to give him a little leeway, I understand that, because you cannot have somebody coming parking in front of your business all day long. Now, you know, it's not good for your business. So now I can understand that. But uh, Basically, the only reason we was here, we wasn't sure about how this was settled on this parking issue. You know, it's a little minor inconvenience, to be honest with you, and it, uh, uh, it kind of makes one mad at another and this and that, and there's no cause for it. This is a minor issue. Uh, really, it's nothing to brag of, nothing to even bother this council with, to be honest with you. got more important things to do, I understand that. But whatever this council decides on that, uh, Parking issue there is fine with me. If they want to keep it that way, then that's what we do. You know. Yeah, Vernon, like I didn't explain to you that day here. I apologize. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't it. need to back the back it. The only problem, and I'll be honest with you, you know, the problem we've had is right here in the central. Yeah, the place they the they park a van there. And I personally, myself, have seen two wrecks mm -hmm. because of that red van where people are coming from North Tennessee to hit Jasper Pike. Yeah. They pull up to, to take a ride on that red line. They yes. look. They don't see anybody. They don't see that car beside that red van until it's too late. I've seen two accidents myself. I've had a couple complaints on the van yeah. and a couple of cars parking on the central where the sweet streeper can't clean the storm drains. I understand that. I've no never moved the vehicles at night. You know, that's that's why we've got to give the chief over here a little bit of leeway to handle a little bit of this. Oh, you, you can, really. Jimmy can handle it. But since since it's come about, now I've sent Stan over uh -huh. twice, Stan. Talk to them about moving the van, and they would move the van for about a week, and then, and then put it right back. Mm -hmm. Now, since they done this, they've moved the van from one block up to the next block, which is made worse. So you've got the same situation. Same I understand that. Now, I mean, you try to be nice to those people. <laughs> I understand it. The only thing about this situation, you know, I understand the officer doing his job, and I'm thankful for that. Right. Uh, it should have been handled a little different. A lot of times, if you've got someone on the business that's parking in front of a two-hour parking, go in and ask them and tell them, you know, first. After that, then he's got every right in the world, in my opinion, to do what he needs to do. Now, well, as I say, I apologize. Oh, it's, it's not all your my, fault, Mark. To, like I said, I've parked there for a long time. I've never been paid any attention to the two-hour parking. I didn't need it. Be honest but now, I did there. pay attention because there wasn't one on the other side of the street. Now, what's fire for one side right. of the street is fire for the other right. side of the street. Oh, I promise you, if it happens, we'll be fire on both sides. Now, that's all anybody's asking. But, you know, any of these small businesses, you know, they've been here in this county for a long time. Right. And, you know, they've helped support this county. It's not much that they do, but they're still here. Yeah. And like now, I said, I apologize to Mr. Walsh from back there. He and my dad grew up together, run around together. Yes. I would never. You know, I understand it. It's, you cannot blame the officer in this situation. I'm sorry. You can't. He, well, he was doing what he, he was done his job. He was doing what he was talking. And most of the times when they get a new officer in, this is a fact, that's the first place they're sticking. And this issue pops up. You know, it popped up 10 years ago on me. They wrote me a ticket over here behind Smith. You know. Which is no big deal, you know. I, I let Cooster, they took care of that because I'm always over there. You know, I understand that. But now, he was right. It's a no lo it's a loan. I understand that. But you've got to have a little leeway for these businesses. I understand that. 
And, you know, the best thing, you know, I don't know, if, uh, do we have the traffic out of uh, the top that walks up and down the streets there? We do have a police officer walking the, the business I noticed district. one in front of Smith's the other day. They do, they do walk, and I think they walk every day, don't you, Reed? Yes, okay. sir, they do. And you know, I, 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 I told Jimmy. No with that. You know, he just needs to go in and, and uh, meet a few of the people that own these businesses and understand what they're going through. Right. You know, the biggest thing they've got now is people still on the blind. And you've got people making meth right here on the center of the street if they can. And I understand. That's why you don't want that van there all day. You may have a mobile meth lab right there in front of your door. I don't so we, I don't we've got to give these guys a little, little leeway to take care of this situation. But now, I don't know. That's why we're here, just to see how the issue was, whether the two-hour parking stands or whether it doesn't. No, we, we've had no problem with just but now, your by, by with the two-hour parking non-standing now, uh, if any of these businesses have a complaint with somebody parking in front of them, can the chief do anything about it? Now, you know, you get into a situation here by that. Probably about the only thing, you know, is yeah. asking the moon or something, you know, or place yeah. park in front of the business. You know. I know some, uh, one business in particular on North Tennessee, they got mad at this one business and they parked right in front of the business. Yeah, that's what I'm know saying. You, know, you can have some business get mad at somebody else and just go over and park their vehicles in front of them all day. There's nothing you can do. I understand. That's why we've got to give you know, these officers a little leeway to try to do something about it. Yeah. You know, we've got those parking lots right across the wall. We've got one there. We've got, we've got plenty Jersey. of parking lots in this town right here. Yeah. You know, I understand that. But that's the only reason we're down here tonight, because we did not know which way this issue was going to go. Uh, if it was still going to stand in the office, I'm going to go around park somewhere else. But if it causes any problems, she will. Yeah. Well, if the problem, to me, if the problem <coughs> is on, common, um, on Central, I agree with you. then let's eliminate all <coughs> two-hour parking except Central, <coughs> and then make that a two-hour parking. But... We need to, when we do this, and we put it into a motion form, mm -hmm. it needs to be for that we can protect everybody by using the word uh, <coughs> necessary. Yeah. For ever mm -hmm. it's necessary that this council feels to I put agree. the two-hour parking, then we can do it without having to come back in and, and, and go over all this stuff again. So I'm for eliminating all two-hour parking except on... Uh, Central Avenue, where the problem was created to start with. That's you know, my view. You, you put parking out here on the main street through this town, it creates a hazard. No, I understand that. Full time parking <coughs> it creates a hazard. But uh, I agree with Pastor on this issue. We've got to have a little leeway here for these guys from work. These guys over here at the police department can do their job. And I understand that. But uh, like I said, I did not know which way the issue will, this issue is going to go. However, you decide on it, it's fine with me. Uh, uh, all I ask is what's fair for one side is fair for the other. And that's it. And it's caused a lot of hard feelings between people, which is no cause. I'm sorry, there's no cause. But we, most of us know each other. We've got a problem. So you sit here and work it out. Really? There, I promise you, there's no problem. I, I, I think the majority of the council feels the same way. Well, you know, other than that, I have nothing to bring before this day. I'm going to get home and leave you guys alone. Uh, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, every administration. Approve uh, Harlan Carl Blake Shield and five employees to install a roof on the police department. All right, cost it. $6,875 labor and $19,503.24 material. Not to exceed $27,000. Kate, okay, you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Um, well, uh, I recommend uh, to you to declare this an emergency simply because uh, the leaks back there. Uh, and if it keeps falling, if the ceiling keeps falling, that's going to destroy our phone system and our computer system. And it's going to damage, uh, it's going to cost us quite a bit of money. So I would 
My recommendation would be to declare this an emergency situation. How long has it been like this, Kay? It's got worse in the last. We've known a little bit. You like it not in the last six months? Huh? Not in the last six months? It's, it's not the last bad. month is when it's really been falling. We've had patch bob probably, I know, at least two times. Well, if I may <laughs> speak a little bit on this, I went up on the roof and looked at it, and you've got three or four big holes up there, this big around. It's pulled loose. The water can't go no more but down through the, the system. And uh, 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 me and Blankenship and Gary Burke, we all uh, went up there and looked at it. And, uh, and I agree with Kate. It's not hard to see. This is the ceiling. If some of you want to look at it, this is the ceiling. It's done drop down. And then this is the wall that's done split out and all the sheetrock come off of it. <coughs> and, uh, and that's where all the phone system is in today. And, uh, uh, and it's very simple. Uh, I'm for fixing it. If, you, if you've got a building, take care of it. And if I need to put that into a form of a motion, when Mr. Sexton to declare this as emergency, I will. Thanks for me. Like I say, you know, since I've been murdered, we've had this paper patch twice, maybe three times. And every time we thought we'd had it fixed, and every time it comes down for them, we've got buckets everywhere and water, all these waters and stuff, and these files. We've looked better if I didn't have an office except in computers. And uh, like I say, we all knew except Bob. Bob, Bob wasn't here when we beat those roofs out. The community money we received, I thought, Five hundred thousand dollars to fix this thing here, which is like a Titanic. It takes in more water than the Titanic did with some. But the bid come on this thing is four hundred some thousand dollars just this one building. Okay, we had the Rex Center up here for Johnny. We had the Rex Center old beach spot in the far hall also needed the roof. To be honest, we when this bid come in on this building, four hundred some thousand dollars I never dreamed, and we was just borrowing time before it did happen. That's but it still requires to be bid out. I mean, anything over four thousand dollars has to have three bids and has to be advertised. Well, Terry, you talked to Melissa today. What? Do you I, I talked to uh, uh, Miss Ashburn, this MTAS attorney. She said that um, I'll tell you exactly what she said. She said, first of all, she didn't feel that what that it fell under. Um, emergency procedures, but if the city felt, based on the circumstances, that you've got a leak with your water, uh, with your equipment, your electrical and computer systems, computer uh, equipment in there, that you could declare it emergency as long as you document it. But, uh, like for example, the 19,000 materials, uh, you're going to, anything over $10,000, of course the materials are not, the way I understand it's not going to come from one source, but you still have to get three quotes on the materials to cover the materials and then buy the materials from at least two different places. Now, of course, the labor is a totally different matter. Reed, how is that? That's the first I've heard of it. Um, I'm not familiar with what does constitute or doesn't constitute an emergency purchase. Uh, I'd like the opportunity to at least be able to research a little bit and look into it. Uh, I don't know what constitutes what you know, like what constitutes one and what doesn't one. But uh, I think she gave some good advice from the standpoint of uh, uh, for the materials. You definitely would have to <coughs> double check that uh, as far as getting quotes on that. But the labor itself, I don't know how <coughs> you deal with that. I don't know how. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know. I need to look at it. And uh, this is the first I've heard of it. So to be honest with you, I don't know about it. I can't. Afraid, if I gave you an answer now, I'd probably be wrong. Okay. Uh, I, I, I think that uh, any other any other place in the building, uh, you know, if it's just in a, in a room where there's a desk or something, we can move out and, and wait for bids. Uh, I'd say yes. It probably would have been an emergency, but you know, you've got we spent uh, forty some thousand dollars for a new phone system, and it goes in, in this room plus other computer equipment. 
And for that reason, I think you could designate that particular part of it as, a, as an emergency, you know, not to run your equipment. Now, I don't know how long it's going to take it to rain again in order to do that. And I don't know how you protect it in the meantime if it does rain. I just don't know. But it's been going on for more than 30 days, correct? I, I don't it's know. Got, it's not got this bad. It's not got this bad. No. It's been going on. I mean, it was like this when I left four years ago. It I wasn't mean, this bad. It I wasn't this bad. bad. I agree. But it still need to go through a bidding process, Mayor. I believe it needs at this amount of money. It needs to go through a bidding process. Well, now that's the reason that we've got the problems we got back here now with the attitude that you've got, Mr. Fannin, is, is because it uh, we've got the leaks. We've got five million dollars <laughs> in the bank, and you're going to sit here and tell me that we can't declare this thing emergency and fix it and, and, and get the problem solved instead of costing us another fifteen or twenty thousand dollars by waiting on it. Uh, I'm I'm not for waiting on it. I'm for fixing it, getting it over with and, and well, getting it fixed and, and save our bill. Terry just said the materials had to be bid out. So well, you can't you can't really fix it when you don't You don't have to bid it, you gotta quote it. You gotta get three quotes on it, is what you gotta do. It's not a bid procedure. You gotta get three quotes on it. Terry you want to if you if if you're buying it from from and of course we buy materials all the time if you buy it from if you're buying it from more than one person uh, you're going to have to get three quotes on it from uh, for, for each part of it uh, if you buy it from one person you're going to have to do seal bids that's right so Terry is it my understanding so are we purchasing the material well and that's what ask, and we're going to ask for three quotes and this gentleman just providing the labor. That's what the, that's what they proposed. Yeah, that we would be buying the materials and the the people, Mr. I guess Mr. Blanchfield would only be provi providing the labor on it. How do we arrive at this nineteen thousand five hundred three dollars forty cent forty three cent material? How where did that come from? Steve, we got a price quote from a roofing from a material shop on that material. We actually got an estimate on what so it would cost. So we need, Terry, what you're saying, we need two more of those estimates on that identical list of, of materials that we need from this roof before we move forward. You would have to, you would have to take, you would have to take quotes, mm -hmm. but for that amount of money, you could not buy it from one, one person, one, one, one vendor, right? If you bought it from one vendor, you'd have to do a sealed advertised bids. See, we we could still do it just as quick with a sealed advertised bid. We could pay it off in ten days. And we have this in within 10 days. Is that the minimum Julie? Is 10 for an advertisement? Mm -hmm. Two. Yeah. You're what? Is it the minimum what? You, it's 10 days. You, you basically have to give you just have to give a reasonable time in order for it to be. After the specs have been set down, and I assume the yeah. specs have been set down because it's got off of, you know, you got 19,000, you got to the penny how much it's going to be. So the specs evidently has been set down, so it shouldn't take more than 10 days to bid this out. You're going to get three quotes, and it's going to take four or five, a week to get three quotes anyway. Can you adjourn the session? You want to say something, Katie, before you stay Well, uh, not really. Um, I'd just like to get it fixed. Uh, I agree that we need three quotes on the $19,503. Uh, if, if, you, if, if you're going to get it from one, you know, if you're going to buy it from different vendors, you can get three, you can get some qu quotes. If you're going to, if it's going to come from one vendor, you're going to have to seal advertised bids. Which right. this price here, this $19,503, that is from one vendor, correct? That yeah, is as far as I know, yes. Is it possible to get it from different vendors? To yeah. Break it down? Yeah. We just need to make sure each vendor is given the the, set, the exact um, the and, and and if you do it that way, then you would have to purchase it from more than one vendor. Yeah, the material. Well, we all want it fixed, right? Okay. Exactly. And we want it fixed quick. Now, have we acted quick enough to do this for you? It's not, it doesn't look like this. It probably happened, but. Uh, I still think a sealed bid is, is the only way to go, and we can do it within 10 days since we already have the specs. I feel like we're better stewards of our money if we did it, because... There's no specs on the roof. Carl, 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 there's no specs. Well, the only specs you would have, uh, Carl, is, is the material itself. That's all. 
just let the, this the square footage of the material. Is right. that now on the, on the uh, labor part, uh, that also, uh, as Terry said, that's an issue also. Uh, it has to be done under contract labor somehow. Well, I would assume if we're going to bid it, it'd be part of the bid. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just saying if you do it uh, as an emergency thing, and, uh, it has to be done under contract labor. We're going to, get, have to get three quotes anyway. It's going to take 10 days, seven to 10 days to get three quotes. Uh, well, you, you've got to get in, the, if you do COVID, you've got to get it in the newspaper first of all. Well, yeah. new, newspaper is, yeah. today's Tuesday, we can have it in the newspaper Thursday. Well, they and got, Friday. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow may, it may, may or may not be, because they have, they've got, uh, they want it in there a certain, so many days ahead. Well, we, yeah, we well, got time. Yeah, to yeah, yeah, right. It only has to be in one thing. He's here. Well, in the meantime, we might as well go ahead and put a bid in for five more five-gallon buckets to catch the water in. <coughs> right. That's <coughs> what you'll have to have. <coughs> Do we need to bid them, Bob? Nope, but you need to bid this. Yeah. That's my opinion. So may I give you a motion here? I make a motion we bid this out and uh, cut it off at what day is the day? The 8th. Cut it off as, as the 18th. And open the bids and, and hire it out, have it adjourn the session so we can uh, be, uh, award the bids. On the 18th? Yes. Um, they have a Yes. That's a color vote. Mr. Bollinger's? Yes. Mr. Payne? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Hatmaker? No. Motion carries. I want to make a motion that we consider this as a as emergency situation, put it into a form of a motion. Motion and, and head free vote, Tanya. Huh? They had three votes. I don't, well, you can see if we got three votes on that. If we declare an emergency situation, we'll do it every half we want to. <laughs> Make a motion again, Andrew. Make a motion again. To get a second on it or not. Make a motion on it. Make a motion. The, the motion is that uh, somewhere or another we need to fix this thing temporarily. Because if it rains, You've got water coming in out here. And we have no control of the water. I don't, Bob Benham don't either. I don't think he's connected that close. But uh, my motion is that we declare this as an emergency situation and whatever it takes to fix it, temporary or, uh, or not, fix it. It's my motion. It's your motion to have a second. Carl, is there any way that you can go up there and do something, just a temporary little fix to get this for the 18th? There's no way of guaranteeing nothing. You've got a concrete deck for two roofs on it. Yeah. You don't, you don't think you can tarp it a little or something and, and keep the bulk of it out until the 18th? Like I said, I can do it, but there's no guarantee to it. Put a small pump up there, maybe. Stan, how long have you been putting buckets on? I ain't putting no buckets on. Police department has. Police department, how long have you been putting buckets on? Just one or two times? No. I'm not well, sure. you've got a serious problem in this vault. Oh, I agree. What's about to happen here? With that ceiling falling in, somebody's going to get hurt back there. You need to go back there and look at it. Have you looked at it? I haven't seen it. You need to go look at it. You've got a problem and it needs to be fixed before we end up with a more serious problem. Well, we want to fix it. Well, My understanding is it would take, Carl, you said 11 days to fix it after we, something like that? It'd be complete. Complete. I just looked on the roof would be on in three, but you got all the detail work. I have to see for and you create yourself a mold situation here, and you're going to end up in a big lawsuit with the employee uh, having them working in an area for that it, it's all been molded. And, looks and, like they already worked with mold. Huh? It looks like it's already been done. Well, you, you don't need to tell them that they can do that. You, you just know. leave. <laughs> you have a motion on the floor. Do you have a second? 
Is that where we are? He has a motion on the floor. I have a second. Motion passed from elected city to take it be down. What did you propose to do up there on the police section only? Would you stand up and tell us what, what's your idea of fit making that fix? I, I was going to re re-roof the whole section. You've got a wall on one side and a wall on the other. I was going to go from wall to wall, replace everything with new material. Nothing, take the gravel wall, everything up there removed. The deck, the deck and everything went to Right, you'll get no insulation. It's concrete pad, Carl? Yes. Concrete pad. And then we'll take it off and then we'll it. And I'll take it off. I'll glue the insulation down. That way I can do away with the rock. They're just up there to hold it on. Then I'll fully in here a 60 mil system on top of it. That's that, that's that new That's white. that new white TPO. It'll come with the one here manufacturer's warranty. I'm just curious. You know, we got three sections here, and they're, they're like steps. They come up. This is a high step I'm trying to go right now. And then we go out to here, and then we go down to the library. It's like like this. And we're only talking about the police department, you know. And someday, in the near future, you're going to have to consider coming above through here. Although, I don't see any leaks in here, but it's going to be bad. You got baby. It's you got one. You got, how many you got in here, Dan? One. How many leaks have you got in this building? In this building? This section. This section. It's leaking in here and it's leaking in. There's at least three that I know of out here in the yeah, lobby. And, and we just hard, got a guy got hard now uh, trying to fix three or four of them over here. Yes. Leaks. Yes. In, in fact, he was on today. Yes. That's all I had. Under administrations, item number two, approve agreement for community health of East Tennessee and HUD in the amount of uh, $2,600 for eight homeless units for the first year and $2,300 for the second year. Fellas, you want to come up, please? Ms. Clayman? Fellas, you know everybody, I believe. Pardon? You know everybody? I think I do. I do have a handout that I'd like to give to people at the front, please. this group, if you'll pardon my back. Um, I do want to just share with you that in 2010, Community Health of East Tennessee wrote a grant to attempt to provide affordable housing for chronically homeless individuals. According to the definition of the grant, what the requirements were, we had to determine a geographic area that we wanted to serve. We looked at the number of um, uh, families that were requesting help with utilities and with rent payments, families who had been served through the HPRP grant, which is a grant that came through the Tennessee Valley Coalition to End Homelessness. And the city of La Follette by far had many more requests for assistance than any other jurisdiction within our county. As a matter of fact, <coughs> Campbell County did utilize almost 30% of the funding for the HPRP program. And um, the city of La Follette used $130,000 of that grant amount just for utilities <coughs> for people residing within the city of La Follette. So based on the data that we were able to collect from the point in time count and from the HPRP funding, we chose the city of La Follette. When we wrote the grant, we were very um, optimistic 
at uh, the award thought that we could <coughs> save nine families. So I need to correct you, Mayor, not eight, but nine families. It would be nine households, individuals and families. So um, we are looking at trying to come up with funding that would provide for five two-bedroom apartments and four one-bedroom <coughs> apartments. We were looking at prioritizing who those individuals would be who are labeled as chronically homeless. That would include victims of violence. That would include disabled veterans. It would also include people coming out of treatment programs such as the Shepherd's Home or something similar and anyone who might be coming out of some type of a treatment facility who would be willing to follow the protocol, the rules that would be in place for this program. This is a permanent supportive housing program. And we, when we were awarded the grant, we were thrilled, ready to move forward. And then HUD made an interim rule. HUD can do that. And their ruling was that the leases for these apartments would have to be between the grantee, which would be us, and the landlord. And when we contacted our insurance company, our insurance company indicated that we were at too high of a risk to take that on. As you are aware, Community Health has a federally qualified health center. We have homes for adult disabled. We have a network of programs, including domestic violence shelters, and they felt the risk was just too great. We said, fine, we'll pick up a secondary insurance to try to help cover it. No, because if that's exhausted, they will still go back to the primary insurance source, and the risk was too great. For months, we researched possibilities. And finally, came to the conclusion, much to our regret, that we were going to have to turn the money back over to HUD. And at the last minute, we asked, can we transfer this money to someone? HUD indicated that we could do that, but the money had to remain in Campbell County. So it's still a blessing. And the real blessing is that the Tennessee Valley Coalition to End Homelessness, which is located on Callahan Drive in Knoxville, is willing to serve as our partner. So they will assume the greatest part of the risk. All of the apartment leases will be in their name. Um, the little complicating factor was that now there's some cash matches that we're gonna have to try to accommodate. And so that's why I'm here this evening. Mayor, we've tried to keep you abreast of things all along and I know that you're very knowledgeable of the programs and services, but I'm not sure about some of the rest of our city council members. What we're looking at would be community health would provide case management services and serve as a housing manager. I would be serving in that capacity. In addition to that, we would be offering drug and alcohol services for these clients. In addition to any health concerns that they might have, community health would cover those costs. And um, we would also offer a number of supplies that would be needed for the program to be in operation, especially in the area of whatever documentation needed to be done to satisfy HUD. They, as you are aware, there are many lengthy requirements with HUD. Um, the La Follette Public Housing Authority is working with us and attempting to help us with some of these things. And um, we have to come to you to ask for some help with the cash match. As you look at the data that is printed on the back of the letter, you'll see a budget. The total cash match that the city of La Follette is being asked to contribute is $26.24. $2,624. If that were divided among the nine households that could be established, that comes to less than $300 per household. And as you can see from some of those costs that are listed there, some of those have to do with supplies for the program and the operations, but have to do with drug and alcohol abuse counseling, and that's primarily for drug testing. 
also furniture and household items, and then some of the sophisticated computer networking systems that we have to be able to go into. So it comes to a little bit less than $300 per family. Our goal is to try to serve nine families total. They have to come from the city of the Follett. That's what we specified. The county mayor is agreeing to cover $3,000 for cash match with a veterans grant and with an HMIS grant already. And that does serve the full county. So William has extended himself as far as he can at this point. And since this is to be confined within the city of the Follett, we are coming to the city and asking for assistance then with this remaining amount. Our plan is to identify a family or a household one at a time. When that family is identified, to locate the apartment and arrange for the housing furnishings that are needed, plus the household items that are needed, and get that family in as quickly as possible. We're in no position to try to do nine at once, so we'll tackle it one at a time. This funding for this grant is two years, so it's not a lifetime, it's two years. And uh, what we're looking at then is for the cash match for year one. We would like to think that we could be in a position where through additional pleas that we put out to the community, area churches and what have you, that we can get enough donations to cover the cash match for the following year. Uh, but we, we were not able to hit the ground running this time around due to the fact that the insurance caused a problem and we weren't sure we were even going to be able to have the grant. I would hate to give HUD back $108,000 when we could house people with that money in this community. And so I'm just asking for the support of City Council and I am more than willing to answer any questions that you might have. Please note that on the other side of the budget is a letter that has been submitted to HUD where the documentation has been put in place that this program would be transferred to the Tennessee Valley Coalition who in turn would transfer it back to community health to serve the people in the city of Ophala. We're still waiting on final word from HUD, and they're waiting on final <coughs> word for this last little bit of cash match. So it's kind of a domino effect. Um, but once we get that in place, there will be a memorandum of understanding that will be signed with the appropriate parties, and we can begin to move forward. I will tell you that news of this has gotten out because we have been talking about this for a while now. And we already have many phone calls coming in asking for help. But we can't begin to do anything until we get the final approval letter and until that check is cut. So we know that the need is there. Now may I answer any questions for you? Well, Phyllis, you know how I feel about it. We've worked yes, sir. years on this. And just this week, I've had two families uh, call me to some kind of help, shelter or wedding or something. Probably a lot of it because it's our families involved, you know, and good friends. But uh, when Melanie first met with me and Kate last week, I went to a, a local business. Would you come up, please? I went to a local business here in the city of Lafayette, and I was telling this gentleman about it. And I'll get him to introduce himself and where he's from. And I was telling him what we was trying to do here in the city of Lafayette, your homes. And he's a pastor of a church, a local church in Campbell County. And he pledged $100 a month. First year. Can I, may I ask a question? Yes. How much did you say you had to have? The total amount is $2,624. Our church will uh, will do half of that. As uh, Is it okay we do it on a monthly basis? We will underwrite half that in our budget. Then why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Like yes. what church I'm Pastor you? Gibson with the Word of Life Church. We're in the old Fort Town Baptist Building. We've been there about seven years now, so. and we're, we're out to help the community. We feed a lot of people, pass out food, and everything else too, but we're out to make, try to make a difference. And uh, this is one of our heart, heart drives too, is that uh, there's a lot of people that I see, I work at Derek's Pawn Shop, and I, I've got people coming all the time looking for places to stay and to live and to eat. And so I think the church is in link with uh, the community, with, with the city government can, can make a difference. So. Oh, I, I believe that. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. I want to put Board of Ocean within the city, whatever the difference is. We hand that way. We obligate ourselves for, for the remainder so that you meet your, your cash match requirements. Ms. Hosh, thanks. Have a motion to see the county road, please. Mr. Bowling. Yes. Mr. Fannin. Yes. Ms. Freedom. Yes. Mr. Hatmaker. Yes. Motion carries. Phyllis, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you for the second year if they come up to it. If you'll come to Riggs Drug Group, we'll supply the second year. See. Okay. Thank you. See, just two people. Yeah. Okay. Phyllis, wait a minute. Okay. I think the preacher had something. Will you score say something else? I just want to know that, uh, let's continue to know we're out here to do our best and help the Got this community, so whatever comes up, uh, if, they, if somebody will let us know, we will do what we can do. And we really appreciate it. I really thank you. Thank you. I'm like, yes, you get a five gallon bucket. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Charles? I got plenty of five gallon buckets there with him. Okay. Okay, yes. My question is a uh, guy just came to the other day. Did he get up at your place or the library? I'm not sure. Anyway, what kind of home you got? If someone is incarcerated, or someone is in a mental health facility, or someone is in a halfway house, and they get ready to release, they're homeless. I'd like to know what is home. You got what the definition is? Tell me some homeless. Okay, that, that's a good question, and and I think that um, especially in this context, it's important to realize this is not an emergency housing grant. So this is not a grant to put somebody up in a hotel for two or three days until we can move them off to someplace else. It's no, more of a long term. This is a permanent supportive housing grant. And so people have to fit the definition of homeless, meaning that they have been living in a situation that was unfit for human habitation. Um, they have to meet the definition of chronically homeless, which means they've been homeless for a year or that they've been homeless three times over the last four years. And if that is the case, primarily because of economics more than anything, then we would look at their history and determine what would be the best course of action for them. Now, in addition to this grant, Ridgeview has a grant, the Novus Grant. And that money is for dual diagnosed individuals who have mental health problems and other kinds of issues, and that five-year grant of some millions of dollars is designed to help those individuals. We're prioritizing victims of domestic violence, people coming out of treatment facilities <coughs> like drug court, and that means they're still being drug tested, and then um, individuals such as disabled veterans or people who may be coming out of other treatment facilities who are willing to abide by the rules. So, so there's accountability with your program. Most definitely. I'll be meeting with them every week. What's your goal? To get in a year's time that they be back on the road? Yes, and in, in, in two years' time in some instances, however long it takes, that they're going to be able to be self-sufficient and make it on their own. A lot of our women who are involved in domestic violence situations have never had to try to build a budget, know very little about financing, they don't understand the complications of um, uh, installment buying and all those kinds of things. So we're going to be doing an awful lot of life skills development and drug and alcohol counseling, any kind of counseling that we feel would be appropriate. We won't know what their individual needs are until they come in and they participate in an intake assessment. And then there is an action plan that has to be created and submitted. HUD's going to be following this all along the way. They want to see that these benchmarks are made. If they're not, then we're not going to be successful. So we're going to be selective in who we choose. And if we come across someone who's needy that doesn't fit our program, we'll refer them to another program. One more question. These, these, house, these units, whatever you want to call them. Scattered apartment sites. Apartment. Mm -hmm. They will be in the city limits of the fall? They have to be. And they'll meet all the safety codes. Uh, they have to be HUD approved. Okay. You've answered all my questions. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Under administration, under free, approved to replace, repair, keep, repair, use, and keep. Uh, stay. Please.
appropriated some money for that, and basically I just need to get the color that uh, that you want to go with and get them ordered. I'm going to try to get them in time for the street festival we're having, so that's pretty much the colors we can choose from. Uh, these, these right here, these four. So. Yeah, the brown is what we got. And it, uh, This is the ones that you're talking about in. Right, that's the ones we put at the soccer field. We've got six of them at the field at the soccer field. That's the color we chose there. Yeah. That's the planner. That's the planner. Right. Right. Yeah. It's so, just a question of, you know, what color. Right. It's a 90s, so it don't stand out like a silver thing. Right? It's, it's bronze, basically it's bronze, bronze coat. Okay, and I'll get three quotes on. Um, I just want to mention a couple things. Uh, uh, Police Chief Lynch wanted to go ahead and advertise for the police cruisers that we had in the budget to come out from about, so we've got the specs on those, so if it's okay with the council, we're, we're going to go ahead and run an advertisement for bids on those, on the two. It's two, two. 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 Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. And, uh, and then I wanted to mention this to you, the Chamber uh, Commerce call, the Chamber, and uh, they're working, they work every year on their uh, Governor's three star program. And they've asked, they've got until May to get this done. They're asking all the cities if, if, that's in the county if at least one city official would go to an elected official's place. They get points for that to help on their three star program to get it approved. And they've asked if someone before May, when these places come up, if at least, at least the person would go to one of those places. And then they get points for it. I think we amended by deleting the existing section in its entirety and replacing uh, the same as follows. 8 201 sells beer shall hereafter be lawful to sell, store, for resale, distribute, or manufacture beer of alcoholic content of not more than 5% by weight or other beverage of like alcoholic content within the boundaries and corporate limits of the city of Follett. The corporate boundaries of the city of Follett to embrace the territory established by the Charter of the City of Follett as well as all annexations duly approved and adopted by the City of Follett, Tennessee. Any license duly authorized by the chapter shall be within said corporate boundaries as described herein uh, that are now zoned or maybe in the future be zoned for business use and the same shall be subject to all regulations, limitations, and restrictions as here, here and after provided, which are, which are our beer code. So it just basically uh, puts our new boundaries out there. The old, the old uh, uh, I wasn't aware of it, but the old, uh, old beer code only had a restricted area. Yeah, I didn't even take that to the license. No, I didn't. Okay. okay. Well, what's the first count? My hair motion that we approve 20-13-01. Okay, I'm going to have a second. Second. I'll approve your one. Mr. Bollinger? Yes. Mr. Fainan? No. Ms. Graham? Yes. Mr. Hatmaker? Yes. Motion carries. Any number of business Can I ask, say one thing? Mm -hmm. later? Sure. Uh, I've got a memorandum from Kay. I'm sorry, I just now looked at it today. It, it's talking about the insurance, and it said, in addition, it's talking about the deductible going up, the out of pocket going up, and it said, in addition, we cannot continue to offer short term or long term disability. And we've not voted on that or anything like that. Oh, uh, that's correct. Uh, if you, we, uh, so we're going to continue to do it through this month until we have a workshop. Because I, I think it's a big benefit for the employees. Was uh, it your mm -hmm. That's what I sent out, I think, to put in the people's check, you know. Yes. Uh, basically, we're looking at money, and y'all approved, what, 35000 keep the insurance? 
if trade, if we added, if we added a long term, short term, it was going to be, it's going to kick it up over that. But it's already in the budget. That wasn't no. The long term, short term is already there. No. Well, it, it was, but it was. But, but, it, but what they. Uh, what they actually quoted for the health insurance was over the over the budget, so anything you add would be in an old, in additional overage. If I understand. So this is what you're trying to cut to get the yes. We're trying to cut that to get to reap the amount that y'all approved. You were thirty-five thousand dollars short, and this if you add that to it, it would be more than thirty-five thousand. I realize that long-term, short-term is, is uh, definitely. Uh, and uh, I have no problem. We have no problem with adding it back in. You just got to tell us to. And then by vote and tell us where to get the money. But it, it's not out yet. I mean, right now it's still in effect. We haven't voted to take it. was in the budget. I saw it in the budget. So uh, we, ju we just had an amount in the budget just for the just total insurance. And when they quoted, uh, the quote was. Thirty-five thousand over what was in there. So, if if you keep if you do keep that, um, I don't think nobody's told them to to take it out. It, you're just going to have to prove ex additional money beside the thirty-five thousand. I'm not sure. We'd have, well, they didn't give us any. Well, they did not give us any quotes on it. So we cal you calculate it by per. I mean, we've had it for six years. It's been around yeah. twenty-three, twenty-five thousand for every year. And in some cases, when this uh, when an officer goes down or a police uh, fireman goes down or a street, they can use this as 60% of their salary up to $5,000 per month. And it really not save their homes and everything because they can't work. You mean put them in jail or shop them off? Yeah, I mean, uh, this continues until we talk about it. Yeah, so he actually didn't give, he didn't even mention it when he came, when they quoted on the insurance. Um, there wasn't any calculations on it at all. Well, we had, uh, I'm like Bob, we had it. Yeah. Uh, approved the long term, I think, what, four, four years ago? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and it was supposed to still be in there. And well, it, it, was ca it was calculated at, the, at that particular time. Uh, you know, what was in this budget now, since it renews at the time it does, was just an increase in the budget for say from last year. Uh, that, cal that calculation included as you all said, short term and long term, but like I said, the, the it was in the total. Well, in the budget, it had eight percent. You allowed eight percent for health insurance. But it, but, but that wasn't enough. Yeah. But that uh, was, well, it was only seven point two. But that was part of the package. Yeah. No, it wasn't. This is separate from the health insurance. Yeah. yeah. But, but we had, we had, we uh, usually they give you a, a calculation on it, and we just add to the health insurance, and it all goes in that one line item. Now it was it, it's been in there. Except when we did this budget and added the percentage, uh, the, the quote just for health was over the 911. So anything else you add to it, if you keep that, it's going to be more than 35,000. Oh, will you know more about that for our next workshop? We'll just have to get him to give us some calculations on it. Yeah. He can do that. Yeah, he just, he just didn't bring any. Yeah. You know, we're going to be business there. Uh, I'll make a motion that we adjourn the session until Friday the 18th at 5 p.m. Let's do it at 6 p.m., please. Or 6 p.m. I'm burning late tonight. At 6 p.m. 6 p.m. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Mr. Ronald. Motion, yes. Adjourn the session. Adjourn the session. Yeah. We'll move to a woman. Mr. Bollinger? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Graham? Mr. Hatmaker? Yes. Mr. Curry, do you know the business being adjourned? Your board called order. Call the wrong place. Mr. Bollinger? Here. Mr. Cannon? Here. Mr. Graham? Mr. Hatmaker? We have no business to come before the year board. Mr. Chairman, the order for us to pay the tax credit for 10 at last, uh, my beer board meeting, we, they, we approved a beer plant that fell in this zone that we were trying to correct. So they weren't allowed to give one. We need to rescind that.
I don't think that basically it was technically moved now since we didn't have the majority degree for it. And I just, just, we just need to put it back on the agenda. It'll be approved by the next meeting. We'll just vote it back on right. that. Okay. And that, that would be the simple. I mean, can we, I mean, since you approved the old city, is that going to take that? Right? And it'll be next month because we got another reading. Okay. 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 Okay.